Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. In this one, we look into a very nice and tricky problem that has some major practical consequences. So you definitely want to stand by and we will dive right into it. So here we have a very simple calculation and if we follow the order of multipendical operations, we would have 0 0.7 plus 0 0.1, which is obviously 0 0.8 and times 10, that should be 0 8. And we cast this to an integer and we, should, and we would expect that it is still 8. So let's run the application. However, the result is 7 as we see here. That's weird, isn't it? And don't get fooled by the fact that we have used this cast to integer, that's only a pretext that we have used to make the problem more visible. But until the end of the video, we will understand exactly what the underlying problem is, so you definitely want to stand by. First of all, I have to say that this is not an issue with C Sharp. This is a very well known problem in computer science and it has something to do with the inability for us to represent exactly certain type of fractional numbers. And that happens in virtually all programming languages. Let's take it step by step. I think we all remember back from the times when we went to school that there are some fractional numbers that we can't represent exactly even if in our decimal numeric system. Take for instance 10 divided by 3. The result is something like 3.33333 and it virtually goes on for an infinite. So obviously when we want to represent this number at a certain point we just need to stop. Now when it comes to pure mathematics we have developed some notations that would indicate exactly that this tree will always repeat and therefore we use notations maybe something like this and i'm aware that we might use different notations in different circumstances but that's how i learned it at school so we are accustomed with this type of problem from our day-to-day -day life let's say but now if we think a little bit about computers computers tend to work in that binary system where everything is represented by a zero and a one However, in the binary system, we also have the same problem that certain binary fractions or binary numbers cannot have an exact representation. For instance, the number 0.1, if we try to represent it in binary, it will look something like this. And if we take a closer look, we can see that there is a pattern, the 0011, that always repeats, and it tends to repeat infinitely. Now, the problem with this binary representation and with our computers is that we cannot simply just use a notation to determine that this is not an exact representation of the number. So we have on the one hand an infinite sequence of zeros and ones, but on the other hand we have our computers that have a very finite memory. So this means that at a certain point we simply just need to stop the sequence, but then the question is where do we stop that? I know it's rude to answer a question with another question, but what do computer scientists do when we hit such roadblocks? Well, we create standards. And that's exactly what happens for these floating point representations and floating point arithmetics. So in 1985, the IEEE 754 standard was created that has standardized the binary floating point arithmetics. The standard is obviously extensive and it covers really a lot of ground. But if we put this in the perspective of the most commonly used programming languages, basically we can summarize that the standard proposes two different formats for binary floating point representations. First of all, we have the 32-bit representation of binary floating point numbers. So according to the standard, we have 32 bits at our disposals to represent a binary floating point number. Since this is a standard, the representation follows a certain pattern. And from all these 32 bits, if we look at the screen right now and if we start to think about it from left to right, the first bit always is dedicated to the sign, so it defines if it is a plus or if it is a minus. The next 8 bits are dedicated for the exponent. The exponent is very important because that is the way that we define exactly where the floating point should be placed. And then we have the number itself, the fractional part, called also the significant, and this is represented in the remaining 23 bits. Very similar to this format and following a similar pattern is the 64-bit representation of binary floating point numbers. According to this format, we have the first bit that is still dedicated to the sign, we have 11 bits that are dedicated for the exponent, and we have then 52 bits that are dedicated for the fraction or for the number itself. Sounds a little bit too abstract, well, don't worry, because I think we can show this in practice, and we can obviously use C-sharp for that. 
The cool thing about C Sharp is that it provides implementations for both of these different formats. And for the first one, so for the 32 bits, we have the float as a data type. And for the second one, we have the double. To make this difference in precision visible, we can first divide one by three, but do this as a float and then do the exact same thing, but as a double. So let's write them in the console and run the application. So what we can see here for the result is for the float, we have the 0.333, but it actually ends in a four, while for the double, we have a 0.33333 and so on and so forth. The idea is or why we use this number is because obviously is this zero or this one divided by three in decimal, it has a virtually infinite fractional part that would also translate into a virtually infinite fractional part in the binary representation. And that is where this rounding kicks in. Now for the float, obviously the rounding kicks in and becomes visible to us faster because it has a lower precision. And that's why we have this result here. Now for the double, we have a higher precision and therefore the rounding that happens basically in the floating point representation is not even visible when we transform it back. However, let's see what happens if we multiply this result by three. And if we run the application, we see that both results are one. On the one hand, this result might be expected because we have divided one by three and then the result we have multiplied by three. So theoretically, it should give us the same result. However, as we have seen that we don't have an exact representation in a decimal system for this idea of 0.3333 and so on, we would have expected that when we multiply that by three, we should get a result that is less than three. However, this problem with the rounding and the floating point arithmetic can become a little bit problematic when we take or when we look at it from a practical perspective. And let's simply output in the console this 0 0.1 plus 0 0.3. Let's make this a right line. So what we would expect would be a very clean 0 0.3. But if we run the application, we see that the result is actually this one. And the main problem with this is that this result is not an exact number. And if we start to multiply it or integrate it in different other operations, we might get weird results. Imagine this would be a financial operation and this result will be multiplied with other numbers. Obviously at a certain point, we would get values that we wouldn't expect. And in that case, we need really a little bit more precision than that. Therefore, we cannot simply use double as a data type for operations that require a high degree of accuracy. Luckily, in C Sharp, we also have another data type that is tailored precisely for this type of operations where we require a very high degree of accuracy. And the data type is the decimal. So why is the decimal so special in C Sharp? Well, as the name implies, it is special because the decimal is actually not a binary floating point representation, but it is a decimal floating point representation. So this translates into the fact that if we think about floats and doubles and how they are re represented when we create them, for floats and doubles we have something like this, but decimals are represented using something like this. So you see, we use the exact value of the number. Obviously, decimals will also be transformed in the end into binary because that's the way that processors work. However, the thing here is that this transformation doesn't adhere to this IEE 754 standard and therefore we have a little bit more freedom to play with that. So the binary representation of a decimal first of all takes 128 bits, so it's definitely far bigger than the others. And also it contains 96 bits or digits for the fractional part for the number and it contains the other 32 bits that are dedicated for the sign and other very important flags that would help us to actually take the binary and recreate the decimal from that specific binary. To show that the decimal is better suited for such operations, we'll do exactly the same stuff that we have done previously on floats and doubles, but we'll do this on decimals. So let's write this also to the console and we can see that a bigger precision also results in way more digits that we have in the double representation. However, the very nice thing happens when we try to multiply this back with three as we have done earlier. So if we run the application now, we see that the decimal is not rounded back to one, but instead it is a more exact calculation of all the zero point and all the trees, which is 099999, which is obviously the way that would also happen in mathematics if we would 
create a fractional part from one of a third and then we would try to multiply it back with three it wouldn't give back one but it would still give this 99999 so that's more exact and it is betterly suited to use for these very precise operations last but not least let's also add 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 but this time using decimal so as we run the application we see that the result in this case is a very clean 0 0.3 and it's not 0 0.3300000 and a 4 at the end. It's just 0 0.3 as we would expect that. And that's the reason everybody says you should use decimal when you do financial operations and other very important stuff that needs a high degree of accuracy. Still, there is one more thing that we need to take into consideration. So as we have seen, decimals are represented on 128 bits, doubles are represented on 64 bits and floats are represented on 32 bits. So when we choose a data type to work with, we also need to take this into consideration because in the end, we need to balance between the requirement for accuracy and with performance. So if we have an application where for a certain calculation, the high accuracy of the calculation is more important than the performance of the application, in that case, we should obviously choose decimal. But there might be a lot of other cases when performance is actually much more important than having a very high accuracy. And in that case, we can even go for a double. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. It would help the channel massively. And if you're for the first time here, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you are always notified when there's happening something new on the channel. And if you have any question or just want to get in touch with me, don't be shy and get to the comment section and leave a comment. I would be more than happy to get in touch with you. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.